So my name is Friar Reto Davitz, and um, just uh, sitting here in St. Raphael's Parish, uh, just after the octave of Easter, still in the Easter season, glorious time of year, even with the pounding rain, now spring has come, and brings to mind the new life of uh, vocation, uh, of, of God's life within us, and His glory shining, attempting to shine through these these fragile vessels that we are. And, uh, and so, to my great astonishment, God uh, began doing his work within me um, in terms of leading me to a vocation. And uh, I guess if I had to date that, it would be around two, year 2000 or so. And uh, for me, it was um, just a wonderful journey. I, I, at first, of course, it started with uh, a little bit of, um, I guess, of a learning curve, trying to figure out how does God really speak to us? And I think we're always astonished when God speaks so closely to us and um, we realize that he's that, that much a part of our, our lives, our hearts. He's so within us. He knows us more than we know ourselves. Well, how, how can we ever reconcile that? with our minds or their thinking. It's, um, it's an astounding fact, and yet it, it proves true on these amazing occasions. And so we have um, God somehow speaking in his spirit. So I find myself one day just um, daydreaming, actually, which I can't say I do a heck of a lot of, but I guess I was just sitting back in my bed and thinking. And this thought pops into my head, and it, I see it truly as an inspiration going back now to that, those moments, because I think there were a few of them, and that one inspiration was that I found myself seeing Friar Reto, future Friar Reto, I guess you could say, but as a priest. Uh, not necessarily as a Franciscan, but as a priest. This is the first image, and what am I doing? I'm holding up the Eucharist like this, I'm consecrating it in my hands, and it's, it's the Mass, obviously and I'm the priest. <laughs> and so he, begun his, he had begun his work in me, and, and um, I guess I, I didn't understand anything except that it was worthy to be shared, so I did, I did just that. And I, what, what I was doing was bouncing it off somebody else, who, you know, fortunately being that it was a Catholic school, um, philosophy of, and theology, I was able to share with somebody who had a faith, who in fact himself considered vocation. And so what did he say? He said, God speaks to us like this sometimes. I said, oh, I didn't, didn't think he would necessarily. That seems so innocuous. Um, you know, I guess he speaks to us in our dreams as we, we hear and read in the Bible. But here I was thinking this, this innocuous um, uh, daydream how could that be? And, and yet, um, the picture did strike me. And I thought, well, if it struck me enough and somebody else gave me a little cue, I'm going to go for it. And, 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 and just have interface with the big guy more often. And so I, I spent some time in chapel just focusing in on that. I said, Lord, if you're actually showing me something here, let me know. And I wasn't sure how I was going to proceed from there, but let me know. I'm curious, you know, in a good way. <laughs> and I want to move forward with this. I want to know where my life is going, too. And if, if this is your well, that sounds wonderful. Uh, that, up to that point, I, I, I was very naive in a sense about how God could strike a person, because he doesn't strike you down with the idea. He kind of comes at it slow and cool, and everybody's different. And yet he has this way of emerging uh, in that little garden of Eden in the bushes and saying, hey, I see you there. And, uh, and indeed he's there and he, uh, he speaks to us and then we're a little bit taken aback. But he has some wonderful things to whisper in our ears. And, and I, I, I was listening, I guess, enough to take it back to him. And he took my invitation up and uh, 
and kept giving me what I, I like to call little breadcrumbs so that I was able to follow him um, all the way to, to where he really, I think, I believe, wanted me to be. And uh, so, to sh kind of speed up the story at this point, um, I continue my discernment. That's what they call it. So I did that for the following few months, and I, I was still studying philosophy in this school, but every so often I would sit back and think, what is God maybe saying to me about this? I mean, priest? Okay, fine, but what kind of priest? I mean, give me, give me a bit of a picture here, some clarity, some enlightenment. Sure. You know, God's like, yeah, good. And I, I guess feeling my, I was ready. At that time, in that stage in my life, I was, there was a, uh, I guess, an opening in my heart for, for his word. And so I, I listened, and, and the answers seemed to come. First, religious life. Huh. Why does that just seem right? <laughs> Family. Okay. Next, um, what religious community? Franciscans. Now, why does that just seem right? I don't know. Let me pick up this book that somebody gave me and I completely left behind on my bookshelf because I really had no intention of reading it, except it was about St. Francis and about the charism of the order he found. Look through that. The words jumped out at me. It was a very powerful reading as of scripture, but it was the words of Francis and the words of <clears throat> describing what, what was unique to his gift um, in religious life in the world and it spoke to me it spoke to me in a way that uh, <coughs> called me ever closer in fact that's what it felt like it felt like I was being invited in because something here was for me something uh, here was was going to touch me and, and um, yeah made me closer to God and what was the next step well I guess I had to ask God, listen, this is starting to look interesting, but I'm still a bit of a skeptic. Don't forget, I, I'm studying philosophy here, so I have to analyze, and I say, well, I need a poster. Let's go low tech on this. I need a poster. I need to see some, something somewhere posted up on a wall, and I'm gonna look at it. If it's Franciscan, it's, it's going to get a, a response from me. I'm gonna call the number on, however that works. And so, sure enough, um, I'm in that same school. And would not you know, the Dominicans who taught that school uh, had a Franciscan poster, a conventual Franciscan poster, and, and I didn't know what conventual meant. It didn't matter, it said Franciscan, God lived up to the deal. And it was the sign, I believe. So I call the number, and the current pastor of this parish, incidentally, was the vocation director at that time, and he invited me down to Toronto, to from Ottawa where I was, and I gladly accepted the invitation. Came down, and uh, lo and behold, I had a lovely weekend, nobody knows I'm there, but I listened to everything, take it in, ponder it a little bit, and take that bus ride back to Ottawa, probably studying on the way home, and uh, just letting my experience sit with me. I get off the bus and it hits me like the most wonderful shower of grace, I suppose, because it was everything. Joy, peace, uh, the vision of a new life, uh, one where in, in one sense I would find that fulfillment of my heart's desire for uh, all that is good, uh, and that what really what God would want of me and for me, and it seemed like the best thing ever, the best thing in the world, I accepted at that moment, and I was on a high for the next few days, and everything else was elevated, mood, uh, spiritually, my, my vision of things, and it was, it was truly the most powerful experience in my life from the spiritual point of view therefore the deepest and most uh, just most wonderful 
and uh, that and many other such experiences kind of kept me going and uh, and yet the anticipation was was very strong so I didn't need to always experience it but God was saying was continued to confirm the beginnings of that journey and uh, so I end up two years later in a house uh, run by friars called uh, a house of formation, postulancy house, a candidacy house it was called at the time. And I go and, and that's where I begin my journey. 